what can't you do? What's the limit? I, I don't think there's a limit, guys. I think you can just run. And the more you run, the better you're gonna get, as long as you're recovering. What if you could run more? What if you could run every single day? What if you could run twice a day, every single day? What if I told you that I'm running currently twice a day, every single day, sometimes three times per day? Not only am I not injured and I'm not burnt out, but I'm on day 52 now, and I came into this with an injury, and I used running twice a day, every single day, to not only get over my injury, but I had to improve my recovery in order to keep at it, and I'm gonna share with you in this video five things that are going to improve your recovery dramatically, and they're things that you probably aren't already doing. Some of them you've probably never heard of before, but elite runners are using these. Will you use them? Oh, and before we go, make sure that you stick around to the end of this video because we're doing a raffle giveaway. It's for two weeks only. I'm gonna share with you how you can enter and how you can win a bunch of really sweet free swag. So how do you do that? How do you run every single day? Because I've never done that before. I've been running for 27 years and I've never run every single day for months and months in a row, doubles a lot of days. I've never done that until now. But I started doing it because I hurt my leg here, tibialis posterior, this muscle that goes, starts here and then wraps around the back of the ankle right there. You ever hurt that before? It really stinks if you hurt it. But I'm training for this 100 mile race and it's in six weeks. And I realized that if I want to run 100 miles and not hurt my leg, then I better be able to run a lot of miles, but I can't run high mileage. So what am I, what am I gonna do? I didn't wanna make it worse. So what I did was maximize my frequency because you can change your duration, intensity, and frequency. And those are kind of the parameters of training. Two of those I didn't wanna max out. So I've just been super consistent about running frequency two to three times a day, maybe a three mile run, maybe a seven mile run, maybe a 10 mile run. And now I'm doing long runs only for the last three weeks now. But here's the real key, okay? I'm focused on recovery. So what I'm gonna share with you here are the keys to recovery. Two of them are lifestyle, they're really important. Three of them are modalities that you can use. Um, the lifestyle ones are most important, but I'm gonna share the modalities first because it's probably what you wanna hear first, right? So the first thing is I use a massager on my leg. It's pretty nice and I just massage the, the muscle that I'm taking care of. But you can use this on all your major muscle groups and all the, the little minor muscles too. You can't use it on like your toes or your hand because you know that little head there has to be able to fit on it. But otherwise, this thing is great. Now look, I'm also a massage therapist in two different ways, in sport massage and also Thai yoga massage. I don't practice anymore, but I'll tell you, this thing right here is, in terms of therapeutic massage, this thing is better than a massage with like someone's hands. Now, someone's hands might feel good and like psychologically, it's like, ah, oh, it's nice to just lay there and get a massage. But this thing, it hits you, it pounds on your muscle, like, I don't know, in a second, like what's the RPM on this thing? I don't know. A lot, okay? It's like maybe dozens of times a second and it just whacks you and hits you and no hands can do this. It's like five, 10 minutes of that is like an hour massage with hands. So I use that a lot. I suggest you get yourself one if you're a serious runner, if your mileage is going up. But here's two other things that I use that are pretty high level. I think you're gonna like them. Okay, first one is the one that you've probably heard of before and that is ultrasound. So what I'm holding here is called the transducer and inside of that, deep inside there, there is a crystal. And what happens with the ultrasound is the plug it into an electrical source and it vibrates the crystal, which sends a sound wave. So like ultrasound, it sends a sound wave that penetrates into your flesh. And depending on the settings you put it on, you can change how deep it goes and you can change how inten intense it is. Maybe it, a lot of times it'll go and then turn off and go and then turn off really quickly. It's called pulsed. So you can do a lot of things, but it basically gives you a massage deep down millimeters, millimeters be below the surface of the skin that you can't really get to and it massages on a cellular level. And it helps with cellular metabolism, it helps clean out lymph and debris, and it helps break up scar tissue, it's really cool. So I just use that, I put the little gel on it and then I put it on my leg here. You gotta move it. If you keep it in one spot, you'll burn yourself, okay? So you have to move it. And uh, I've been doing that too. And then, here's a third one for you, you ready? What the heck is this thing? This is a laser, it's called low level laser therapy. Now these things 
I'm a sports medicine practitioner as well. That's what I went to school for. So I know how to use these things, but it's not that hard, okay? Um, there are some subtleties to it, but it, overall, it's not that hard. Now, it's hard to get these things. If you try to get one to buy one, it's many, many, many thousands of dollars, many thousands, okay, for ultrasound too. But you can get them. You can get them for use as like a veterinary care and then just use it. It's kind of like a loophole. Um, but you can, if you search hard enough online, you can find lasers, okay? But the laser, you don't feel it at all. Nothing, no heat, no sensation, no tingling. You put it on the injury and you kind of move it around a little bit. And what it does is it, it just basically takes light and focuses it under your skin, like to the injury to where light from the sun doesn't really penetrate. And it's a laser, so it penetrates. And you get light onto these tissues under the skin. And it's, it's basically taking like many wavelengths of light. So like all, not, I don't know about all, but all the wavelengths of the sun and it concentrates them into a laser and then shoots it into your muscle. And it's pretty cool. It has really awesome therapeutic uses. You can look it up. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's called LLLT, low level laser therapy. I recommend it. You can't hurt yourself with it at all unless you like shine it into like your eyes or like your genitals or something. So don't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, you're good. So, okay, I shared with you three things that you can do for recovery. And I'll tell you that those things, they help, but they don't really matter if you're not doing these two things. So I'll tell you in order. The, the second to most important thing that you can do for yourself is what you feed yourself, what you eat. If you put good stuff in, good food, good air, good water, good thoughts, you're gonna recover really well. So I did this run and I came, all I had this morning was, um, I, I had a, a big cup of tea, then I had 32 ounces of water, yellow watermelon juice. And then on my run, I had a 24 ounce bottle of watermelon juice. That's all I had. So I had like 500 calories by two o'clock after I had run three plus hours in the mountains. Okay, so I came home and I ate all these mangoes. This is a pretty big bowl. And those are the skins of the mangoes that I ate. And I don't even know how many it was, like seven or eight big teat mangoes. And uh, I'm gonna eat more, my belly's full. I'm just gonna wait, film this video, wait 15 minutes and eat two, three more. But I'll tell you, when you eat living food, living food, and this is alive, right? It was growing on a tree not that long ago, but it, it's alive. If it starts to rot, it's not alive. If you cook it, it's not alive. If it's uh, something that used to be alive, like an animal, and we kill it and then cook it, it's not alive. If it's packaged and, and vacuum sealed and on the shelf, it's not alive. If you eat living food, there's so many good things in it that is beyond the scope of this video here. But think about it for a minute. You get all sorts of, of good things, including something that's really important. I mean, aside from the macronutrients that you get, you get... Carbohydrate from glucose and fructose, which is what you need. When you run, glucose. Your brain uses only glucose. You need, and you can turn fructose into energy as well through a different pathway. But this is what you need to live and to run. But aside from that, aside from the macronutrients, you have two other things. You have micronutrients. Now, where even if you eat meat for the calcium or the iron or whatever, whatever the reason is, it's like, where did the cow get that calcium? Where did the cow get the iron? And the cow got it from eating plants. So we don't need to filter our nutrition through another's body to get it. Cause like the animal that, that you may have eaten didn't make calcium and, and didn't make potassium and didn't make iron. These are elements, these are minerals and they come from the earth. So you can get them right here. But you also get high carbohydrate, low fat. There's a thousand things here, but you also get hydration. This is the best hydration you can get because water from the tap, even if it's purified water, it's just water. There's nothing in it. That doesn't exist in nature. There's minerals in water, there's things in it, but the water that's in here is ultra pure. It's been filtered by evaporation and then rain, and then it was filtered through the soil, and then a plant's roots brought it up, and it filtered through the roots and filtered through the plant and it filtered through the cells of the plant, and you're getting it right there. And it's so hydrating, and it's full of electrolytes in the perfect balance of what you need. 
But then here's the last one is that you get enzymes. When it's not cooked, when it's raw, you get enzymes and enzymes are really important for catalyzing digestion. They basically digest themselves. So if you, an enzyme, when you eat a fruit, the enzymes will digest the fruit for you in your gut. So you don't have to expend energy to digest it. But if you heat it up and denature the enzymes, like in any cooked food, you have less or maybe no enzymes. And then you have to digest the food. You have to break it up. You have to secrete white blood cells to like, to handle this foreign thing and you have to put energy in. That's why you get tired if you eat Thanksgiving dinner or you might be tired. You don't get tired when you eat something like this because it auto digests. And then all that extra energy, this is the take home point, all that extra energy that you didn't put into digestion, which is a lot. Digestion is the most, aside from your basal metabolism, like keeping yourself alive, aside from that, digestion is the most energy intensive process that you do, even if you run a lot. So when you get to, take, save the energy from digestion, you can put it into recovery and you can just run a lot. You can run a stinking lot, a whole lot. Okay. And then the most important aspect for your recovery is your sleep. Sleep. You got to sleep. If you're not sleeping, just good luck. And we all have our reasons. We all have our excuses about, I don't have time. I can't sleep. And you got to find a way. That's beyond the scope of this video as well. Sleep is a big topic and I'm not gonna get into it here, but you gotta sleep. Without sleep, you're not gonna recover. You're not gonna run well. It's gonna be hard to lose weight. It's gonna be hard to be healthy. I think it's gonna be hard to be in a good mood. It's gonna be hard to work and focus and move yourself into a higher existence of your life. If you're tired, do you have the mental bandwidth to really go like get it, go get your goals? Not just in running, but like at work and your relationships? Or do you need to just use the least amount of energy, energy possible, get through the day so you can sleep again, right? Sleep. So sleep, nutrition, and then I suggest that you try out some of these modalities. We had ultrasound here. We have uh, massage. This costs like 200 bucks to get a good one. It's a good investment. And low level laser therapy, if you wanna get serious with this. So look, coming off that injury, I ran like 20 miles in a week and then 30 and then 40 and then 50 and then 50 again and then 60 and then 70 and then 70 again. And I'm at like 82 right now and I still have a Sunday. So it just goes up and up and up and I'm like impervious because I'm eating well, recovering well, ah, sleeping well. And like, there's no limit to how much you can run. I mean, maybe there's a limit, but what can't you do? What's the limit? I, I don't think there's a limit, guys. I think you can just run. And the more you run, the better you're gonna get to a degree, as long as you're recovering. Now you take someone who doesn't prioritize recovery and they run more and more and more and they're gonna burn out, injure, get injured or plateau. Or if you run it too fast, you're gonna burn out, get injured or plateau. You gotta run easy, but run a lot. And that's not it. If you stop there, you're gonna be slow. So you need to do raw speed as well. That's beyond the scope of this video too. We've got loads of videos on that. That's what I call base training. Run easy and lots of it and run fast and short, but lots of it. So I hope you got something from that. Today's day, I believe 52 for me, six weeks till Havelina 100. So I wanna say thank you to everybody here who has not only bought the book, but reviewed the book on Amazon. It really helps us out a lot. We're giving away so much stuff to you. Thank you for being a watcher. Thank you for being part of Run Elite. It's fun, but come here for a second. The coolest thing is that you're gonna have a chance to get a customized world-class biomechanic analysis of your running gait so that we can share with you how you can improve your running really quickly, the stretches, the strengthening, the exercises that you need to do. So if you wanna win these items, all you need to do is click the link below and enter our raffle. You're gonna love this so much. It's endorsed by Bill Rogers, who's the great American marathon runner. He's a Boston champion many times over, ranked number one in the world, New York City marathon champion. We also have an endorsement from Jerry Lindgren, who's one of the greatest American runners that you probably have never heard of before. He beat Steve Prefontaine. He was 11 time NCAA champion, uh, Olympic runner, world record holder. This guy's really good. And this book is just chock full of those things. So if you like the material that you're getting here on the Run Elite YouTube channel, you're gonna love this book so much. It's available print and it's available audiobook too. If you prefer to listen, just look up your copy today of Run Elite, Train and Think Like the Greatest Runners of All Time. Thank you to everybody for your support. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you and take care. Off to run.